I have no idea what made me want to do this at 10 o'clock at night when I have to get up at 6 in the morning for work. But after nine months since the first episode and four months since the community post, it is finally time for Skylander Hot Takes Part 2. So if you don't know how this works and you haven't seen the first episode, it's pretty self-explanatory. Put up a community post. People commented their Skylander hot takes or unpopular opinions, whatever you want to call them, for me to react to and review. After four months of this community post sitting there, there are 228 comments. Ooh, boy. For this episode, we are joined by our boy, Yarn Chaos over here. So with his okay, let's get started. All right, so here's our lovely community post here. As you can see, four months old and counting. I didn't intend on it taking this long, you know, life. It's busy. But we're going to get started. All right, my microphone hasn't been used in several months. Let's strangle it on up to me. All right, well, I haven't played Skylander since I streamed it last, so I feel like that's been a couple months now. So my Skylander knowledge will hopefully come back into my brain. So let's go. Let's start off first one, regardless of what it is. I haven't read any of these since probably when I posted it. Hot take. Every Skylander is good as long as you know how to play with them. <clears throat> We're off to a hot start. All right. I'm going to click on the replies. We're going to see what people say because clearly people had something to say. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, sp just sprocket. Wrecking ball. Okay. Uh, how the hell do you use blaster mine? Homie dies in three hits. You are not wrong. Maybe don't get hit. Okay, classic response. Okay, backslash, calm down. Uh, you break it, you buy it. Is the hardest row challenge in SSA? I feel like that's a hot take on its own, but you're not wrong. That is a hard one. But back to the original, every Skylander is good as long as you know how to play with them. I would say every Skylander is good at something. Doesn't mean they're good in general. Some are still better than others. And consider some bad but every skylander is good at something that's the only thing i would change about that then here we got bumble blaster we got hot take blaster mine is my second all-time favorite skylander bold yes he is not the best at all i'm glad you recognize that but he is unique and fun to play as you learn his move set he's good you know i'm just i'm just glad you said he's not the best that's i mean you're valid then it's just an opinion. You're good. Hot take. Glumshank should have played a larger role in later games as the only game he's really useful in is Superchargers and he has one of the best character arcs in that game. 100%. I mean, I agree. Also, I feel like if he had played a bigger part in the previous games, I mean, he was always there, but he wasn't like a main, main guy. It would have made his death in Superchargers more impactful. Even though you could... You could just play Superchargers and never touch any of the other Skylander games, and you would still kind of feel it, I think, that it was an impact on the story. Hot Take Trap Team is the best game, story-wise, gameplay-wise, and gimmick-wise. Love your videos, Victor. Well, thank you, uh, Aaron. But, hmm. Trap Team used to be my favorite game. I've said that a lot. It has great gameplay when it doesn't glitch. I know it's very... Everybody says Trap Team is glitchy, but you rarely run into glitches. It's just the most glitchy of the bunch. I find it actually more glitchy on newer gen consoles. So if I play it on PS5 with a PS4 disc, I run into more bugs than I do playing like it on my 360. Even uh, SSA on the Wii and 360 glitch less, which is really weird. But it does have really good gameplay, amazing story, and the gimmick's cool. Wasn't utilized as well as it could have, but not a super hot take. Here we got Braden. Swap Force was the peak of the series. <sighs> this is an interesting one. Swap Force is my favorite game. Uh, I say favorite because it's it moves around a lot. Uh, 
the past few months, I'd say SSA and Giants are my favorite currently. And I think Giants was peak. Giants and Trap Team were peak Skylanders time, I think. Uh, Swap Force was just the middleman. Swap Force, I think, is the best overall game offering the most to do. But I don't think it's the peak of the series. I would say that's either Giants or Trap Team. All right, this one's a hot take. Swap Force's level length should be what the entire series has. That is the hottest take I have seen in a while. Do I agree? <clears throat> no. I love Swap Force. I really do, and I enjoy the level length. But if every one of the games had that long of levels, every level... I don't I don't think I'd enjoy it as much. I, I think it's kind of what Swap Force is unique for is having those long lengthy levels within the same kind of worlds. Like you have three like levels within each like zone of the map or whatever. And it's kind of unique to that game. And I think if they kept doing that, it would be probably the worst done because people find it boring. Controversial opinion. But I feel like the light and dark elements didn't add anything new to the games. Yes, the designs are really cool, such as the senseis, but the original eight elements are just so iconic. Also, they weren't even added to the Skylanders logo. No, I 100% agree. I have never liked the light or dark element since I was a kid. Mostly because I just held a grudge that I didn't have this question mark element for a long time. But no. Even playing as all of the light and dark uh, Skylanders, traps, I don't find them interesting enough to keep using, um, nor are they impactful on the series at all. And it's funny they weren't added to the logo. I never thought about that. Valid. Hot take, Sunburn is not the worst Skylander in SSA. Now, if you ask my side of the Skylanders community, they're going to disagree with you, probably, because they're just a bunch of sponges, just like everybody else who watches content, where they just absorbed what their favorite creator said once, and now they stick with it. But even I have tried to dig myself out of this rut of saying that I didn't like Sunburn. I don't like Sunburn, yes, but he's not the worst. He's not. In SSA, I find Prison Break to be the worst. On every version of SSA, I just have to say that because everyone who I've said that to tells me to play the Wii version. Then I play the Wii version. I've streamed it. It doesn't get any better at all. I feel like everybody gets worse in SSA. It's not great. But no, Sunburn is not the worst in SSA, in my opinion. Superchargers was an amazing game. Yeah, no, that's valid. It's just very different, and it's an acquired taste. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you do, it's probably your favorite Skylanders game. I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I would I would have rather them release the games every two to three years, like Pokemon games, rather than yearly. Would have been so much healthier for the series life cycle. I 100% agree, but I also 100% understand why they didn't. I mean, you're making, they made so much money off of Skylanders so much and like from ssa to giants they were like shoot we could do this yearly and then giants to swamp for us still cruising and then trap or trap team comes along still cruising and then you know we go downhill from there but yeah no i agree i think they should have released waves of skylanders throughout the life cycle of each game you could have had bigger rosters you could have ended up with 50 figures per game or something like that would have made them more money and would have also kept bringing in the money as they kept preparing the games. It was also it would have also given them more time to perfect the next game rather than having it forced in like some of the games I heard had like development stages of like four to six months. It was ridiculous. So I agree with this 100%. Hot take, Eruptor is overhated and actually really fun to play as. I actually agree. He's still very underpowered for what you'd think a big lava monster would be. 
but he is super fun. He's one of my favorite to use in SWAT Force, actually. His Volcanic Eruptor is, I think I have the most playtime as him in SWAT Force. Um, and in SSA, he's pretty good, too. Giants, he's fine. And then every other game, I can't use him. I don't know if this counts as one. Great start. <laughs> but one Skylander of each, no matter what variant, counts as having that Skylander regardless. What I mean is if you have Dark Sparrow, Spyro, for example, you have Spyro. 100% agree. As long as it doesn't, the movesets don't change, then yes. Because you can make the argument of, oh, you have, you know, Series 1 Spyro, but you don't have Series 2. But there is a difference between the two because you do have the Wow Pal that's added. So technically it adds something. But other than that, yeah, the whole Dark Spyro, Spyro thing, variant colors. Yeah, I agree. Hot take. If Skylander, uh, Skylanders ever return, there should not be a new gimmick. Instead, bring back all gimmicks so they all have a use. I don't know how hot of a take this is, but whatever. You know, I've heard this. I've heard this quite a bit. Um, but Skylanders games, like, each game has its, its gimmick. And if they did that, it feels like modern movies right now where they keep bringing back, I hate using this reference, but the No Way Home Syndrome, where they keep bringing back past actors just to get people in the theaters. That's what it feels like. So I'm going to have to disagree with this one. Luke Warm Take. Interesting. Lava Viper, or whatever name was from SWAT Force, was the best Skylanders boss. And it's no competition. Competition, okay. Uh... I have to disagree. For nostalgia facts and fun, gotta go Drill X. He's still my favorite in the entire series, followed by like SWAT Force Chaos for just the boss battle alone. I would never put the Fire Viper, that's what it's called. See, I got that knowledge stuffed up in there. I would never even think of the Fire Viper when someone asked me, hey, what's your top 10 favorite boss fights or best boss fights? So I would say that's a hot take, not a lukewarm take. My internet is so trash here that I'm trying to load more comments, but it's not working. If you guys ever wonder why I don't make more content and as frequently as I used to, this, this, this is literally why. I have no internet. <laughs> Okay, I've been staring at the screen for too long, and I need to go to work in the morning. We are going to pause it here, and it'll resume a, a different day. I'll be wearing different clothes. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm too tired, and the screen won't load, and I'm frustrated because I tried to make content. I'm supposed to be in bed. I have work in the morning. Teleport to future me. All right, and we are back. You guys thought I was joking. No, my internet is that bad at this house. Um, so let's get back into these hot takes. So jumping into one that I see, I jumped to about where I was. So Chompy Boy, hot take. This video will be released on the day it is released, which is December 18th. Sir, you have never had a hotter take because you're just wrong. Um, next, honestly, Drill Sergeant is my favorite Skylander out of the original 32. Not really a hot take, more of just like an opinion, I guess. But Drill Sergeant's overhated. In SSA, he absolutely bulldozes through everything on the bulldozer path, and I will defend that till the day I die. Hot take, Sunburn is actually good. I'm not saying he's like stealth elf of elf level, but he's much better than Sprocket or Blaster Mind or even Head Rush. 100% agree with every bit of that. Perfect. Imaginators has the best gameplay in the entire series. I mean, it should. It is the last game. So I, I think I, I think I can agree here. Yeah, I think on like Xbox One and PS4 and like if you play them on the new ones, it has the best. But if you play it on the Switch, it kind of feels like Superchargers where the Vicarious Vision games kind of have. I don't know how to explain it. It's something you feel when you play it. But like when you hit an enemy, it feels like it drops a frame. Please comment if that makes sense. I swear I'm not crazy. 
but swap force and superchargers when you're about to hit an enemy and you do i swear it slows a couple frames i'm not crazy please please let me know i'm not spyro's design is actually decent yeah no that's a pretty mid take i'm not even gonna lie um the original design was kind of scary and there's some art of it that is scary but by the time they got to giants they figured it out like they were like okay ssa was a little scary looking and then giants they kind of took their own twist made it a little more cartoony and they figured it out and then after that it was fine hot take skylander supercharger soundtrack is the best soundtrack out of all of the skylander games i would have to go superchargers or giants i think i have to give oh ssa is so good but i i can't because i think it's a nostalgia factor that's holding me back but i think it's just a great soundtrack as well but i think it's giants or superchargers so yeah good take oh boy we got a we got a long one here more hot takes i did, did i see your first hot takes i don't know you got a lot here all right trap team on the wii is actually playable it is i've done it and it didn't crash at all so yes giants in nightmare mode are virtually useless mm, i disagree swarm is still very useful boomers decent if you do all the heroic challenges they're all great again um, Giants is harder than most games, not included, not counting Imaginators because I haven't played it. Agreed. I think Giants is one of the harder to do locks in and solo runs in. That's why I choose it so often to do so. Jumping, jumping males. Sorry. Jumping makes is what it's supposed to say. Got a little too excited there. Jumping male. Oh my gosh, I did it again. Jumping makes the games easier. It feels like a dodge button agreed 100 percent. because it's also a big part of like boss fights and stuff like that in later games like you have to jump over things uh like the mesmeralda thing you can literally jump over the little guys that go across every way you know you guys know what i mean and then the little spinny things that come around uh chef pepperjack boss fight so many boss fights are based on the dodge button which is jumping ssa cores work perfectly until superchargers they really feel weaker um, I would take it a step back and say trap team, but yeah, that's it. And then we don't talk about using any other character or any other Skylander from previous games in Imaginators. That is just literal nightmare. Drill Sergeant is the best Skylander in Giants. You can go from shooting rockets until you kill everybody. I feel like there was supposed to be another part to that. Did I read it wrong? Drill Sergeant is the best Skylander in Giants. You can just go shooting rockets until you kill everybody. No, I'm just illiterate uh yeah no that's pretty right i like the bulldoze ability better like i said like a minute ago cinder is better than chop chop agreed oh wow i'm gonna get some hate for that but i do enjoy cinder better i like range skylanders better i like fast skylanders and unless it's chop chop series 2 i'm gonna take cinder over him igniter is the best fire element from ssa yeah no no flameslinger what, what? Cold, no, hot, hot take, super hot take from a fire element. Hot take, burning. Giants work much better in games where you can jump. Yeah, because it, like you said previously, it's like a dodge button. I spent a lot of time on your comment. I hope you enjoy that. Taekwondo Crow works better as a fire Skylander than a dark Skylander. Absolutely. It just makes sense. Oh boy, we have some capital letters in this one. This is going to be interesting. I think expensive Skylanders like Chompy Mage or Thrillipede should just be average price. Like, what makes them so expensive? Like, I can understand chase variants like Crystal Hot Dog or Purple Eyebrow, but why does Wildstorm and Robo got to be like $200? They are just regulars. I know I'm not reading it with as enough emphasis as you did, but you guys feel it. It hurts that I have to, that I use, oh my god, can I read? It hurts that I used to have Wildstorm and Chompy Mage 2 before losing them in a storage unit. Rip to your old Skylanders. That actually hurts. The amount of times that I've heard that people sold their Skylanders or their parents sold their Skylanders or they just lost them or broke them. It's heartbreaking. It really is. Uh, but there is a reason for why certain Skylanders are expensive as they are. Fuzzy flew in front of my face. Sorry. Well, Robo was the last Skylander ever released, I believe. So that is why he's typically more expensive. And then not just that, but like most Skylanders that are rare, anything rare in the world, there's usually very little of. 
So most expensive Skylanders, there's just less of, or they were exclusively released at places. So there's less of them. So there are more money. It's just it's how the world works. Hot Take Skylanders Imaginators is way better than Trap Team and Swap Force. I'm going to stop you there. No. It has fun gimmicks, unlike Swap Force. It's literally the best gimmick. Most underutilized, but I'll let you keep going. Isn't as long and boring as Swap Force, and isn't as downright bad as Trap Team. Are you okay, Mr. Stewified YT? Are, are you okay? Because that didn't make any sense. Uh, Imaginators is a good game, but it doesn't compare to two of the best of the series. So I'm not saying they're the best two of the series. They're just better than Imaginators. For me, Superchargers is better than Swap Force. In my defense, the first time I played it was on the Wii. Okay, uh, Swap Force was my least favorite game. If you go to the beginning of my channel, I think I raised Swap Force literally the worst when I was a little baby saving Skylands. I wasn't even saving Skylands yet. I meant literally. I was the name. But okay, anyways. But I played it on the 360, and I didn't like it. And then magically, when I started playing on PlayStation 4, yeah, it became the best game to me. Don't know. Just feels better. Just looks better. It, it's one of the best-looking Skylanders games, easily. Um, and gameplay wise. So Supercharged is a great game. It's just not for me. I'm not a big fan of the vehicle things. That's why I don't judge Superchargers harshly anymore because I've come to the fact that like it's just not meant for me. But biggest hot take. Myconoid shouldn't have given me the 49 tree rexes. Sir, I will give you two cents for each one. Send them my way. Hot take bad Skylanders aren't bad. They're just on hard mode. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Oh, I hate this comment. I don't hate it. It just bothers me because it's not true. And I used to think the same thing. Hot take, Skylanders Giants is a DLC. No. Obviously, from SSA that was so successful, why wouldn't you copy the same thing? But change it in every way. Like there's, other than the gameplay and the fact that Skylanders are Skylanders, the games are totally different. Yeah, there's no DLC to Giants. I know. It's painful. I wish there was. But you can use the DLC from SSA, which is pretty cool. And they also modified it so you can use your Giants and these still do things. But it is not a DLC. It's its own game. Oh, boy. SGTV, what did you bring me? I know it's going to be an Imaginator's comment. I don't know if this is necessarily a hot take, but the ability to play as every Skylander ever in the series, in Imaginators, is one of the most understated things in the community. You can't do it in any other game. Another reason why it's the best Skylanders game ever. You were so good until that last sentence. Yes, it should get recognized that it is super cool that you can use every Skylander ever created in that game. But even that fact doesn't make it the best Skylanders game ever. I think it's a great game, but not the best. Hot take, Nightmare is one of the best Skylanders in the series. No. Personal opinion. I will say this a million times. The greatest thing about Skylanders is that there's so many Skylanders, so many different ways to play, different paths to choose, that nobody is going to have the same exact ranking if you were to rank every Skylander ever. Like, if I was to rank every Skylander ever, it wouldn't match up with anybody else's. Different Skylanders would move different places. So there's no really right and wrong there. I kudo you for that. I mean, great for you. I will not be seen using her for just fun, but you know, you do you. Another hot take, Superchargers is the second best game in the series. Not really a hot take if you like the gimmick of Superchargers. Hot take, Evil Hex was 10 times worse than Evil Chop Chop to fight against. If you're not using a fast Skylander against the evil versions of Skylanders in like SSA and Giants, it is a nightmare. Uh, because like... When I play Giants or SSA, I typically use Gilgrunt. With all the heroic challenges, he is easily the fastest. So everybody dies very quickly. But when I'm playing locks and stuff, I purposely avoid using slow Skylanders because I hate slow Skylanders. That's too many S words. I'm tongue twisted over here. But yes, I do agree because when she summons her spells and you're not fast, then they're all going to land right on your noggin. Trap team is only hard because of the boss fights. Anything rose? I'm guessing you meant else. Some, anything else can be beaten uh, easily without traps. I pretty much agree. 
pretty much agreed. There's some Skylanders that can struggle because of speed or damage, but that's literally it. The boss fights are the reason I don't play that game as much as people want me to. I don't think Sunburn is as bad as everyone says he is when fully upgraded. See, it's contradicting yourself. When fully upgraded, he is hot garbage. When you almost fully upgrade him and don't get the last ability, I think it is, he's the best that he can be. And he's actually good. Like, he's usable, does great damage. He's just not for me. People come at my throat for that. But he's fine. He's just not my cup of tea. But he's not bad. I know. I've said he was trash many times in the past. And I'll probably say it again. Skyliner Superchargers was worse than Skyliner's mobile games. I've never played a single Skyliner mobile game, so I can't even answer this. I'm going to say it's probably false, but people in the comments, you got to flame this guy. All right, we have another channel member here, actually. The Crusher of Skylands. SGTV was the other channel member. So we got the Crusher of Skylands here. Imaginators is so much better than people give it credit for. I find it to... I find it to be on the better side of the six games. It's got the best roster by far, being the only game you could play. Okay, okay. Play all of them. I get it. All right, you and SGTV are on the same train here. And makes you want to replay it every time you get a new sensei. Not nah, okay, I got you. I'm on I'm on the same track as you now. Has arguably the most fun post-game content, especially the majority of sensei realms and adventure packs, as well as the MAP having so much more to offer and explore on. I agree here. I'm glad that I didn't play it as a kid because there's no way my parents would have been like, I'm not buying you that so you could buy a level. Like, you need a, a certain Skylander for, like, every level of the post-game content, which equals up to be more, I think, more chapters than the main story. That is why I hold a grudge against this game. Like, it, it's just, like, a continuous DLC. Like, you got to keep buying stuff to unlock stuff. Whereas, like, all the other games, it was either it had DLC packs and it was only, like, three or four or whatever. Or no DLC. And then you get hit with this, where half the game makes you pay for an individual figure, which was, like, 14 bucks each at, at the time. And that's just ridiculous. Sure, the story is nothing special, but the levels themselves aren't that bad by any means. Only having a few misses, like all the games do. Okay, okay, I'm following. I'm still agreeing. Also, the gimmick is just so cool. I never used to appreciate it, but the more senseis I have, the more I'm prompted to upgrade my imaginators that have so much power if enough is put into them. Yeah, no, uh, I have a fully maxed out. It's like level 60-something imaginator. I think that's as high as it goes, and it just destroys everything. But what's funny is even on nightmare mode, if you get hit, it's still takes a chunk out of your health so if you play stupid you're still gonna die really the game's just a fun time all around and was sure a little different but in a good way for the most part i can agree with that that is a pretty cold take i agree with this if people just sat down played it listened to this comment here you're not crazy trying to 100 percent giants on nightmare mode is impossible it is not impossible. I've seen it done. Have I done it? No, because I don't trust my 360's lifespan to get me that far. I got to 99% on SSA on my 360, and then my save file got corrupted. Now I can never use that save file again. You can't delete it. So now I'm just scared to play SSA ever again. It's great. Skyliner Superchargers wasn't that bad. You just have to be good at Mario Kart to like it. Listen, I think I'm pretty good at Mario Kart. I put a lot of hours on my Switch, a lot of hours on the Wii, the Wii U. And Supercharger just isn't my cup of tea. I enjoy it, I guess, as a Skylanders game. But, like, I don't think uh, there's a correlation between Mario Kart skills and Supercharger's liking. I love Wallop. Me too. And all, but he feels way too overpowered in Trap Team. And, like, I almost soloed the entire game with him. Yeah, no, that's why he's awesome. That's like saying... Oh, I don't like Drobot because, like, he just destroys SSA. But, like, there's times in SSA where Drobot struggles. Like, the boss fights. He's not very fast. Listen, hear me out. His flying is uncontrolled speed. It will fly you either off the map or into a different section of the map. And if you're in a boss fight, you are stuck in an area. And you're just going to ping pong against all the corners and then get hit trust me been there tried so 
there always comes a point where an overpowered Skyliner becomes human again. <laughs> like he's he goes from superhuman to human. There's always there's always a humbling moment using any Skyliner. Then we got another channel member, backslash. There are no bad Skylanders, only bad players. P.S. Head rush is goaded. You cannot silence me. Hey, I never tried to silence you. I just tell you you're wrong. Um, head rush is fine and she's creative. And on a low difficulty or a mid difficulty, every Skylander will be good. But judging by me who plays on nightmare or hard majority of the time, you start to see who's better. And damage really starts to matter and speed. Damage and speed are what really matter once you get to nightmare mode. So when people say that like their Skyliners are fantastic, like everybody's fantastic, everybody's the same amount of awesomeness, whatever. It's because you play on easy or normal. But you can clearly see, and I'm not even saying this in a biased standpoint, their stats for a reason. So like some are clearly better than others. And head rush is at the bottom of the list. I'm sorry, but it's true. But back to your first thing, there are no bad Skylanders, only bad players. Yeah, no, I don't think there's any bad Skylanders. There's just better and worse. People don't seem to understand that when I say that. Gilgrunt is my least favorite Skylander from the first game. Okay, he is so slow and weak, and I got him at max level. Did you not spend any on upgrades? Clearly, he's literally the fastest in the game, no doubt, and does incredible damage. This feels like you're just pulling my leg to get a reaction, because it's just not true. Hot take here, SSA is better on the Xbox 360 than the Wii. Okay, I agree with you here. I appreciate the Wii, and I think it's better for cutscenes? But gameplay wise and like using the Skylanders wise, it's 360 all the way. I mean, or PS3. I imagine they play the same. I don't have a PS3, so I guess it's the same as this as the 360 released at the same time. But people always tell me to play the Wii version if I don't like a Skylander in the 360 version. But the thing is, every Skylander in the Wii version, if you if you're used to playing the 360 version and you play the Wii version, every Skylander you've ever known and loved become worse every one of them so i think they just plateau in in the wii version everybody's just mid and so when you go to the 360 version just some skylanders are just boosted like through the roof like gilgrunt's still great in both versions i'm gonna use him because he's my favorite duh i wouldn't I, I, my favorite skylander wouldn't be trash so gilgrunt he's great absolutely perfect in the 360 version if you take him to the wii version you can drastically tell a difference and it's not in like speed or damage it's in gameplay so and i'm gonna talk to you just moving around i'm talking when like you use his hose path and you're shooting your hose in the 360 version his hose will reach to the point where you can't see it anymore pretty much okay like it just damages things you could shoot like the little projectiles out of it constantly but in the wii version it shoots about four feet constantly so that's how all of the, that's what happens to all of the Skylanders, though. They all get kind of nerfed, but the Wii was the first version. So you got to consider it as the 360 is the better version because it boosted everybody. It made them better. It made them more fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, you're right. I had to go on a little rant there. That felt like it was built up for a while. Where are my glasses? I cannot see. Oh, my gosh. We forgot to put chaos out, chaos out again. Oh. Uh. Oh. All right. All right, maybe I'll be able to, able to see a little better now. Whew. Oh, wow, I haven't worn these in a while. All right. Huh. All right. Where is, I just went to use this. This as my mouse. That definitely hit my phone on my bed. Hot take, hothead is cold. If you mean he's bad... I don't agree with you. I just don't think he's one of the best giants, but it's kind of funny that you brought him up because I'm currently working on Skylander backstories and he's currently the next one, which is really funny. I know that blocked out my voice, but he's the next one. That's what I said. That's funny. 
so many of these comments say the same thing. They're saying that either Superchargers is the worst game, Superchargers is really great, Imaginators is the uh, like most hated for no reason. Like they're very everybody's they these aren't hot takes apparently because everybody thinks the same, which is cool to see the community come together for once and agree on something. And then we got Kellen of the streams here says the Wii version is superior. This guy. Fry Rider is the worst Skylander of all time. Managed to be the worst, worse to worse than shitburn dot dot dot. I I mean sunburn. Yeah, I am not a fan of Fright Ride. I'm a fan of him until I use him on a harder difficulty. His dash move kind of makes me angry because it's very streamlined. Like, it feels like you want to move, you know, like water. And this dude moves like a stick. It's just terrible. I don't know why I used a pen as an example. But I can kind of agree with you. But he does do massive, tra massive damage in Trap Team for some reason. Like, 900 hundred amounts of damage with one of his combos it's like the slam where he goes over his head and slams it down yeah that one use it in trap team this might change your mind eyebrow overrated superchargers suck trap team isn't bad and the bugs can make it more fun and replayable in some aspects Traptanium Traptanium chaos first two phases are not hard sunburn is actually horrible Head rush over Blastermind. Blastermind's soul gem is useless. Lobstar is also overrated. That was a lot. Okay, so let's break this down. Eyebrow overrated. I don't know how people rate him anymore. I don't like listen to people. But Eyebrow's good, but he's not great. So I, I guess I agree with you there. Supercharger sucks. Don't agree, just not for you. Trap team isn't bad. No. And bugs. Bugs. Here we go can make it more fun and replayable in some aspects. I'm glad you said in some aspects because if I'm playing a lock and I'm streaming and I run into bugs that crash my entire game, I want to pick up my PS5 and launch it out the window or whatever console I'm playing it on because I played it on every console I own it on pretty much. Traptanium Chaos, first two phases aren't that hard. I would say the first phase isn't that hard. After that, it starts to, it's like medium and then like, you're going to die now. Sunburn is actually horrible. I think we've covered Sunburn enough in this episode already. Head Rush over Blaster Mind. No, I don't agree. Because I like Skylanders that have ranged abilities. So I'm going to have to give Blaster Mind the win here. Blaster Mind's Soul Gem is useless. It's not useless. It's, it becomes useless if you don't use it. That's, that's the word. So use it maybe and it becomes useful. Lobstar is also overrated. I, I agree here because Lobstar lacks a ton of damage. For some reason, you feel like he's going to do so much damage and then just never shows up. Hold on. I just see Golden Queen. Hold up. Robo is overrated and the Golden Queen is the best sensei. That is a super hot take. Robo is properly rated. He's overpriced. People never say Robo is the best. Never. He's great, but he's not the best. The price does not match words, match the gameplay. But he's still great. But Golden Queen is not the best sensei, in my opinion. But kudos to you. Then I think this will be the last one. Treadhead and High Five are the best cores ever created. You can beat Trap, Tier Trap Team Nightmare Mode with them if you know how to play them. High five is really fun. He is actually really tricky and fun. Treadhead, I'm not a super big fan of because he literally has to drive into the damage. High five can stay back and shoot still. Treadhead is interesting. That is an interesting pick. If you said like high five and echo, I'd be agreeing. But I don't know about best cores ever. But great in that you could beat Trap Team Nightmare Mode with him. Okay. I'd say warm take. Then actually, we're going to do one more because I passed a really long one by longtime supporter. I recognize the name immediately. Liam Sullivan. All right, so we're going to go through this one. This is going to be our last one here. Well, let's see. Wernado is S tier. That is a hot take. He's good. I think he's good and super. He's one of the most fun to use in SSA and even Giants. He is super fun, but... 
I don't know. I'd have to like take his damage into account and then like actually rate him properly. So I don't know about S tier. I'd say maybe like B or A. Um, SWAT Force is pretty meh compared to the other games, only beating Imaginators. Um, you know, SWAT Force has fell, fallen hard off my my list. Um, I think it's still the best game, but favorite game. I think it's like bottom three, top three, bottom four. Yeah, no, I think my list is uh, Giants on top now. Then I think I got to go SSA or Swap Force. They're interchangeable in that spot. And then like Trap Team Imaginator Superchargers. That's kind of how it goes for me. Blast Zone is the best swapper. I feel like Nostalgia is holding your back a little right there. When Spy Rise exists, when Freeze Blade exists. But he's great, so I'll let it slide. Drill Sergeant is pretty great. Damn right. Supercharge is easily the best game if you enjoy vehicles. True Rex isn't the best giant. Whale Man, my love. Clearly a Thumpback fan here. Um, I don't. I think Tree Rex is the best giant overall. Fun, damage, speed. He's got everything. He's literally got everything to be an enjoyable Skylander and useful in every way. But best, like, and not die, I think I'd have to be, like, Swarm because of the fact that he's so fast and he's still a giant and can do giant things. Deep Dive is better than regular Gil Grunt. Please don't kill me, Victor. I'm not going to kill you. I love them both. But, I mean, nostalgia holds me back and the fact that I can use normal Gil Grunt in every game. And I can only use Deep Dive in two games. I'm only really going to use them in Superchargers. And I think I just I enjoy the simplicity of Skylanders in the first two games. Like, there's three buttons, very little combos. It's just easy. Like, it's easy. It's fun. Now, Deep Dive Gilgrunt, I still have to learn how to use him every time I have to use him. So, yeah. Prison Break is the best Skylander SSA. I don't know if this is a hot take or a cold take because I hear this all the time, but also there's the equivalent people saying that he is absolutely terrible. Let's just go with that. I could have said some mean things because I've heard so many bad things about Prison Break. And like, I'm not the biggest Prison Break fan until you get to use him in Giants with Series 2. Like, other than that, I don't touch the guy. So that is definitely a hot take. And then he thought of another one. Of course, he, he edited it. Super Shot Stealth Elf is really good. I wouldn't say really... Eh, well, actually, I'd say really fun. I'd say not really good. I'd say good. I'd say that's still a hot take. Okay, I can't help myself because there's so many and there's so many good ones and I just... I was going to stop recording and then I saw one again. Okay, this is actually the last one. You want Skylander hot takes? Are you asking me? Yes. I can give you Skylander hot takes. Give them to me. Sprocket isn't as bad as Cinder. What? That is a hot take, because Cinder's good. Really good. Popthorn is one of the most underrated Skylanders in the series. Agreed. Elizabeth will agree with that so much. It's her favorite Skylander. Gearshift is the best trap master. Agreed. Swap Force is overrated. I, I don't know. I, I love the game, so I I don't know. I'd have to hear the cons from it other than people saying that the levels are long and the gimmick is dumb when it's not both of those. I mean, the levels are long, so I can give you that. If you said the levels were too long, but overrated as a game, it offers the most great gameplay, great ga graphics, fantastic roster that you can like quadruple in size because of all the swapping. So I think that's just wrong overall, but you know, you do you. Giants is the second best game in the series. I'd have to hear behind what game. You wrote all this and didn't tell me what your favorite game was. That's so messed up. And then Ginny is absolutely fantastic Skylander. That is a hot take. That is a hot take. I just spam her main combo and try to survive. So as always, I love hearing from you guys and talking about Skylanders. That is why it lives on to this day regardless of how big an audience is in 2024 that a game was released in like 2011 
it lives on because of how much there is to talk about, how many ways there is to play, and how many opinions people can have. So that is why I always love making videos like this and just talking to people that enjoy Skylanders. These are people that enjoy Skylanders, not the people that just yell at you what their favorite Skylander is and that your favorite Skylander sucks. Nah. These people who we can have several conversations with and just talk about Skylanders is why it continues to live on. So thank you guys, every one of you guys who commented on that post. Thank you for being here, supporting the channel, supporting Skylands, supporting Skylanders, the greatest kids gaming franchise ever. That's a hot take. Did I just end the video on a hot take? Anyways, that has been Skylander Hot Takes part two let me know down in the comments if there should be a part three if you guys still have more hot takes i can't imagine you do but if you guys would like a part three of skylander hot takes let me know and that announcement will be in the community tab so other than that thank you guys for watching thank you guys for supporting the channel me skylanders the community we all appreciate you i'm sure if the skylanders could talk they would say we love you but Instead, I got to say it instead. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.